we're about to do another sixth grade math lesson. I'm Miss Bond. I work at Mercer Middle School and I'm excited to work with you today. You are going to need a paper and pencil or something to write with. So let's get started. Today we are going to be doing an algebra lesson. We are going to review how to write an expression and how to write an equation. So before we get started, we're going to set our goal for today. So just like last time, we thought about how we could make this time a little bit more normal. And at this point, this is kind of how it's going to be for the rest of the year. So in order to make our week, our day, feel nice, relaxed, we need to add in some plans, some structures, and some goal setting. So on your piece of paper, I want you to use this sentence stem. Today at blank time, I'm going to blank. So think about something that you want to do. It doesn't have to be math related, but something that would help you as a learner, as a student at home, so what are you going to do to continue learning and growing? For example, today I'm going to watch a documentary about something that interests me at, I don't know, maybe 7 p.m. after dinner. There's so many things that can help you be a better learner, a better student, for when we come back in the fall and to continue helping you learn and grow as we transition to online learning and learning at home. So I'm so happy that you are here with me doing some math right now. Hopefully you have your goal written down at the top of your paper because we're going to get started. Let's get started with our algebra lesson for today. Algebra is really important, especially in a time like right now, where there's a lot of unknowns in the world. And algebra helps us to see and conceptualize those unknown things and make some really cool predictions about them and be able to study things in the world so that they're less scary. So, a simple for example, if I was babysitting and they're going to pay me $15 an hour, I know some of that but I don't know everything. I don't know how many hours I'm going to work. I could work half an hour, I could work four hours. It depends on other variables, other things that might change, depending on where the parents are going or who I'm babysitting for. So those kinds of things are what we can study and look at with numbers and think about, well, what happens when I work more? What happens when I work less? And to really study how different things affect your pay. So thinking about that in a mathematical sense, we're going to look at vocabulary words that go with writing expressions, how to write expressions. And we're going to come back to that example about if you were to get paid $15 an hour for babysitting, what would that look like in real life? What would that look like in algebra? And try to connect those things. Basic algebra, sixth grade algebra is all real world skills, all things that you can put in the real world and that we can see in a mathematical way rather than just thinking about it in a hypothetical way. We are going to cover three main vocabulary words and build those in throughout the entire lesson. And then we'll add in some more vocabulary words as little extra bonus vocabulary words. But your three main vocabulary words are going to be expression, terms, and factors. So how we can see an expression is if we go back to that problem about being paid $15 Per hour what we don't know are unknown is how many hours I'm going to work so that is going to be my variable that is something that can change bonus vocabulary word because variable is also a vocabulary word so that variable is H or X or any other letter we have to remember that letter is standing for some number that we just don't know yet, or it could be many numbers. I might babysit multiple times and I would want to figure out how much money I should be making at the end of each of those sessions. 
So to really visualize what an expression looks like, I'm going to use some food. So I have some sweet potato crackers. I have corn puffs. And I have half a bag of chips. So these are all of my snacks. If I want to write an expression that would put all of my snacks together, what operation would I use? Well, I'm going to add them. So I'm just going to think of this plus this plus that. So I have two of these, a half a bag of tortilla chips, well, these are sweet potato crackers, so two boxes of sweet potato crackers half a bag of tortilla chips, and a whole bag of sour cream and onion corn puffs. So when I'm writing my expression, I should have a two of something, because I don't know how many little crackers are in here, half of something, and a whole bag. Okay, and we're going to represent that with variables. When we think about our terms, Terms are the things that are being added or subtracted. So the terms are like the types of things. So yes, I can count one, two, three, four, but really the terms are looking at what types of snacks do I have. So I have this type of the corn puffs. I have sweet potato crackers. This would be one term. And I have half a bag of tortilla chips. This would be one term. So in all, I would have three terms. If I were to think about the factors, factors tell me how many of something there are. So if I have two boxes of sweet potato crackers, then the factor is two because I have two of them. I have half a bag of tortilla chips, so there's a factor of one half because I've already eaten half the bag. So that's how we can visualize our vocabulary words. We're going to write this part down. So following along, we're going to write down how to look at these tortilla chips, snacks, crackers in an expression form. So let's get our paper out and we are going to write an expression with that situation with all of the snacks. So when we look at this picture, we have our two boxes here, we have one whole bag, and we have a half of a bag. And they each represent different things, so we should assign different variables for each of them. So you can pick any variable you want when you're writing your own expression, unless the problem asks for a specific variable, usually you want to use a variable that goes with the thing you're describing, unless you're gonna graph it. But in this case, we're just practicing writing our expression. So I have two boxes of sweet potato crackers, one box or one bag of sour cream and onion corn puffs, and a half bag of tortilla chips. I'm going to say half tortilla chips, tea, one whole bag of puffs, two boxes of crackers. So half tea, one P, two C. I have half of the bag, one whole bag, two boxes of crackers. So one box of crackers would just be C, I have two of them, so I have two C. So if I look at the separate terms, I have three terms. I'm going to put them all together in an expression. So if I were to multiply them, or if I were to add them all together, that's my whole expression. That would find me the total snacks. 
and then each of these are separate terms. You'll notice that the terms are separated by the plus sign. So even though there are two plus signs, those are what separates them into groups. So we're kind of ignoring the plus signs there and we're just looking at the things around the plus signs. So I have three terms, let's label that. And terms, writing this down, Terms are parts of an expression that are added or subtracted. So I have all of these separate terms. We're going to use the same expression and we're going to find the factors. So remember that's a t not a plus sign. And we have plus. And so same expression but now we're looking for the factors. So factors are parts of an expression that are multiplied or divided. So when I look at one of the terms, it's made up of two factors. So this one half is a factor t is a factor because I took half of the bag so I'm multiplying that together. So now we've looked at terms, we've looked at factors, our last vocabulary word that we're really going to focus on is expression. So the expression is the whole math phrase. So we labeled our terms here we labeled factors here. When you look at the whole thing, that is your expression. We're going to talk about the difference between an expression and an equation in a little while, but for now, you just have to know that expressions are a math phrase. And they're made up of terms and factors. They can have operations, variables, parentheses, all kinds of things can be inside of an expression. The only thing that cannot be part of an expression is an equal sign. So I'm going to add that on. No equal sign. If we put in the equal sign, it turns it into something else, and we'll talk about that after we do another little activity. We're going to take a little break from writing expressions and equations, and we're going to do an activity from Estimation 180. So Estimation 180 is one of those activities that you can use to just think about math in a different way of thinking about numbers, quantities of things, and how we can relate different things mathematically to each other. So looking at this picture, we have a picture of a stapler with a box of staples. The question is, how many staples come in the box? So if you look, I'll zoom it in a little bit. You can look at the long strip of staples and this comes in a series so the one right before this is to estimate how many staples you think are in one whole strip so that's one thing that you have to think about before you can start thinking about how many individual staples are in the box there are three major questions you should ask yourself when you are trying to estimate to solve this problem so what number would be clearly too low so what is an unreasonably low answer for how many staples come in the box? 
Another question you might ask yourself is, what number of staples is too high? So, which, what number of staples would be way too big that wouldn't make sense to answer this question? Then you kind of have to find a middle ground. But the most important thing is to understand why you are choosing the number you chose. It doesn't have to be right, but you have to use some mathematical reasoning and have an argument to justify your answer. So think about that, come up with your own reasoning, tell it to yourself, tell it to your pet, tell it to your family member. There are other Estimation 180 activities at estimation180.com that you can find as well. Let's go back to writing some expressions. So we talked about what terms are, we talked about what factors are, and we talked about what an expression as a whole is. Now we're going to practice writing some expressions together. So back to your paper, back to your pencil, get in front of you. So when you look at expressions, there's lots of places that expressions can come up. So I'm going to come up with an example. We're going to write the expression together. So say at the store, popcorn costs. $4.99 per box. We are going to write an expression to represent the cost to buy popcorn. So first I need to represent my variable. So the variable in this case would be P. So P is the number of popcorn boxes and so if we have one box of popcorn it will cost $4.99 if we bought two boxes of popcorn what would you do to figure that out if we bought five boxes of popcorn what would we do to figure that out an expression is cool because you can think of any number of boxes to buy and we could potentially solve for it for using that variable so to quickly solve for five boxes we would do five times four dollars and 99 cents i don't actually know that it's five so instead of writing five i'm going to write p so we're going to do four dollars and 99 cents times each box costs $4.99. You can also write it as 4.99p. Both of these are a correct answer. I'm going to put up some more examples on the board and we're going to think through them together and you can write them down with me as well. We're going to go back to that babysitting problem. So if we look at the babysitting problem, Miss Bond makes $15 an hour babysitting. So we talked about this before. We don't know how many hours I'm going to work. So this is my unknown. So that would be my variable. If I work two hours, I would make $30. And so that kind of thinking should help me to write my expression because if I knew that H is the number of hours, I can put my number of hours into the expression and solve. So just like before, this one is 15 times H. So if I work more, then I should be making more money. If I'm multiplying it by a bigger number, that would make sense. Now, here's a question. How many terms are there in this expression? It's kind of a tricky one, because we can write this as 15 times h, or we can write it as 15h. Both of these are expressions, separate expressions. 15h 
this is made up of one term. Even though there is no adding or subtracting symbol, I could add it to something else. Like if I had some money saved up from a different job, from my work, then I could add the babysitting money to the money I already have. So that's what makes it a separate term because it's money coming from somewhere else. But it is one term. So we're going to try another expression that combines some terms and see how that expression is different than the expressions we wrote. So continuing on, our last example, a cab company charges $4 per ride and 12 cents per mile. So there's two things happening here. When I'm charging for the ride, that means if I were to just call the cab, get in, go nowhere, I'm still going to have to pay $4. If I add on more miles, then I'm going to have to pay more. So already we know we're going to be adding some things. And if we just put four plus 12 cents, then you should be thinking, well, what does that really mean? So I got the ride, this was my $4, so for the ride, this, should do something with the miles. Does that mean 0.12 miles? No, it's 12 cents per mile. So this is not actually the miles, that's the cost per mile. So how do I represent the miles? Well, we don't know how many miles we're going, so we need our variable. So our variable is going to be m because it's our number of miles. So then this would be times m. On your paper, I want you to tell me how many terms are there. So there are blank terms. And then which term is a pair of two factors? So looking back at our definition, which term is a pair of two factors? Taking a little break from our notes, let's look back to the screen and you're going to see a picture for which one doesn't belong. So there are four expressions written in those boxes. Each of them could have a reason why it doesn't belong, but we have to have a reason why. So thinking about which expression doesn't belong and why is your first step. If you found one that doesn't belong, try to think of a different reason that a different one doesn't belong. If you come up with a reason for all of the expressions, try to come up with more reasons. The point of this exercise is to really think about our vocabulary, think about the similarities and differences between these expressions. The expression with the exponent doesn't belong because it's the only one with an exponent. If you look at the other expressions, try to think about why they might not belong. I want to thank all of you for watching these videos and practicing some math at home. All of your teachers miss you. We wish that you are all coming back to school this year. It's just a weird time. This has never happened before, so we really appreciate your patience and your willingness to work. So keep it up. Keep watching these videos. Make sure you reach out to your math teachers and say hi because I'm sure they all miss you. Let's look back at our goal for today and let's set another goal. So let's set a goal for maybe later this week. On blank day, I'm going to, so maybe if you want to keep practicing some more math, 
which would make me super happy, you could do the textbook pages that were posted over here. If math is something that you're just waiting to get some assignments from your teacher, also fine. You can play, make a different plan. So on Thursday, I'm going to whatever you're going to do. Remember, keep things consistent, make a schedule for yourself if your family hasn't come up with one with you, and always reach out if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. Thank you.